Welcome back everybody. Today I'm very excited to share with you the accounting masterclass for real estate agents. This is part of the Echo Masterclass series where I bring in professionals from all walks of life, not just the real estate industry. You'll be hearing from attorneys, from accountants, from video editors, and really anybody that can help you in your business. The masterclass series is not gonna be as frequent as the interviews series that we just came out of. And by the way, a special thank you for all of the guests that made season two so successful. And now for the masterclass, accounting for real estate agents. Let's begin. Welcome back everybody. Today we have a very special guest for you. Today we have the master of accounting. We have Jose Zabala. Zabala. Jose Zabala with ZTX <laughs> Advisors. Jose, how are you, my friend? I am wonderful, man. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Heck yeah, man. And I, I feel bad because I, I get mad when people butcher my name and then there I go. You they're gonna <laughs> take my they're going to take my Mexican card away because I just butchered <laughs> that one so badly. But anyway, Jose, man, I appreciate you being on. I remember meeting you down in Houston when I did a presentation for some agents and uh, we just hit it off. We've, um, we've become good friends, I'd like to think. If not, mm -hmm. I just want you to at least nod your head and acknowledge me <laughs> for a quick second because um, I need affirmation. But anyway, Jose, <laughs> hey, it's accounting and you're the master. So I want to learn a little bit about you before we get into the master class. So our master class today is for accounting for real estate agents. So very excited to bring this to the audience. Jose, tell us a little bit, bit about yourself and what you're doing now. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Jose Zavala, or Jose Zavala. So uh, in Houston, Texas, um, born and raised here. Uh, I spent the first probably 10 years of my career working at a CPA firm, so public accounting. So we, we did everything from small grandma tax returns to big, large corporations, you know, helping them with, with full service. Being a smaller firm, we, we did everything for them. I mean, everything, which, which is good. You know, it gave me a lot of exposure to a lot of small businesses, medium-sized businesses and things like that. And being kind of the rebel I am and, and you know, kind of the, the, I, I just, I, if I see something new, I want to try it. And, and so I, I, I had suggested a lot of times to, to my last firm, I was at, Hey, let's, let's try this. Let's try that. This could save some money. This could, you know, this piece of tech could help us. And I just get, get told no, no, no. So I said, you know what? Let me go on my own. <laughs> Let me figure this out. <laughs> so uh, I went out on my own with, for two things. One, to, to be able to, to do that. And then two, to focus on finishing up uh, studying for my CPA. So, you know, Knock on wood, by the, end of the, by the end of the summer, I should have that all done and fully licensed and ready to go. But uh, so, yeah, now I have my own firm, ZTX Advisors. We do bookkeeping, taxes, payroll. But, uh, but what sets us apart is going to be two different things. It's going to be one, the technology consulting. So what pieces of tech can we put into place to help you save some time and money? And two, tax planning, tax planning, tax planning, tax planning. I mean, sitting with you, especially now at the end of the year to figure out how we can help you save some money. Because once the end of the year hits and it's January, there's very little that can be done besides making up expenses. And we all know that's just straight up fraud. <laughs> so, and I hear that a lot, like, oh, well, let me, let me find this or let me see if I can find some more. And it's just like, you know, it, now is the time you need to be having a conversation with your preparer, with, with whoever it is you're, you're having. And if they're not having that conversation, then you need to find somebody that, that will have that conversation with you. Got it. Got it. That's awesome. Yes, yeah, super important. We don't, uh, we don't condone fraud on this channel. So just <laughs> everyone, everybody knows everybody's reporting taxes everywhere, um, even more. Anyway, mm -hmm. so Jose, what's something that, as you know, my audience is more real estate professionals. What's something that they're missing? What's a quick tip that, uh, what's a quick win that you can provide to the audience? So for me, uh, the, the one thing I see a lot with, with a lot of my clients is, is not keeping track of their records. So record keeping, whether that's receipts, whether that's, you know, income and expenses, all of that, no, uh, I find a lot of times they just 
make money, spend the money. And then at the end of the year, they're scrambling to find stuff from drawers and in their wallets and things like that. And, and you know, you're trying to piecemeal something together. And, you know, uh, real estate, being a, being a real estate agent, a real estate investor, whatever it is in this industry, I mean, it is a business, you know. And so we need to we need to know what our income is, which I know everybody knows how much money they're making. You know, that, that's the one thing no one will ever dispute you on, how much money they made. But we also need to keep track of where our expenses are and where they're going. Mm -hmm. You know, because if we're looking at it and we're like, and you're, and you're, and you're worried because I have no cash, I have no cash, but you know, I'm closing these deals, but I have no cash. And then you need to take a look at your expenses and maybe look at, okay, well, you, you last month, you went out to eat at Morton's, you know, twice a week, all month. Mm -hmm. that, that's going to add up, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And meals, yeah. meals, meals are usually only 50% deductible depending on the situation. And so, you know, you're not going to get the full deduction there. And so, that to me is going to be the most important thing is find a way to track your receipts and your income and expenses. So a free way to do it. Go ahead. No, you're, you're I think you're going to touch on it. Oh yeah. So a free way to do that is going to be this open up a Gmail account receipts, whatever at gmail.com, right? Every receipt you have, take a picture, email it to there. That way you oh, have dude. it all in one section. Now, you're still going to have to go through and everything, but at least you have everything in there. It's a quick, easy, and free way to do it. And that way for 2019, you can just look at those, at that email. Or let's say you, you know, you, you're you going and, and you're helping you buy something that, because I, I know Home Depot is, is, is notorious for this, is they can email you your receipt. So just type mm -hmm. in that receipt, receipts, whatever, at gmail.com or hotmail, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Have them send that receipt directly to there. And just that way, all you have in there is just receipts. And that's an easy, free way yes. to be able to at least keep a picture of your receipts. Because that's the most important thing. Because receipts fade. We lose them and everything, you know. Um, now, let, let, let me let me break open the receipts part because I've I've been curious about this. You mentioned fading. And mm -hmm. with technology as where it is now, does my bank uh, statement work? Does my credit card statement work? Would that be enough or do I still need that piece of paper? No. So, you know, this is actually a conversation I had with a tax attorney. We were working with a client and, and he told me from what they, you know, what the IRS has said is, no, you need the actual piece of the receipt. Let me give you an example. Why? Buckies. Buckies. We, we in Texas know Buckies. Those of you who don't know, Buckies is a huge, like, mall. And it's a gas station. <laughs> I mean, that thing, it has everything. Yeah. You go, you spend $50 at Bucky's. okay? How can you prove it was gas and not mm -hmm. drinks and, you know, the coolers, mm -hmm. the awesome coolers they have, or, you know, the food, and you buy just a bunch of junk food there and stuff. How can you prove that? There's no way. You know, the, the IRS can come in and they can say, if they, if they want to be jerks about it, they can say, well, there's no way to prove that that's gas. So we're going to count it as, as something else, and either we're not going to we're going to disallow it or only allow a certain percentage of it. And that's why you need to keep your receipts because there's going to be situations where that comes up. You shop at Walmart, okay? Maybe you went and bought a bunch of office supplies, but they have groceries there as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like who's to say you're not just buying groceries and trying to deduct that amount as office expense? That's why it's always good to have your receipt because you need to be able to proof every single transaction you have. I mean, it, it, it's tedious, but it's just, that's going to avoid you having to go back and search for things and fighting. And it just makes life, it makes your life easier. It makes life, life, my life easier. And at the end of the day, it makes the IRS's life easier. And the easier we can make it for them, the less they get mad and the less they're just like, okay, let's just get this over with. It's easy. I have everything good to go. Got it. Got it. So record keeping, super important. Is there anything else that we can uh, take away from the record uh, keeping part? So, you know, if, if so, if you're if you're one of these kind of uh, so, you know, the, the free version is for I, I would say for those real estate agents that are just starting out that kind of, you know, doing their thing. But if you guys, you know, have an established base and you guys are making a little bit of money and things like that, like then I would look at I would look at actually, you know, one of these paid services uh, for your record keeping. So if you want to just keep records, uh, just keep copies of your receipts, there's, there's softwares uh, like Verify 
and HubDoc that do that for you. And then uh, if you want to take it one step further, and let's say you want to actually keep track of your income and your expenses and everything, then there's accounting softwares out there that you can use. And so the two big ones, of course, are, are QuickBooks Online and uh, Zero, which uh, I personally use Zero, as you can see in the background. I've got the little <laughs> sticker right there. You know that that's my preferred one. But if you're looking for a free accounting software that just does a basic accounting, there's one called Wave, Wave Accounting, and it's 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 that it's it's uh it's uh, cloud based. But it's, you can only access it on your I mean, you can access it on your phone, but there's no app for it. But you can actually access it. And as of now, it's free. Now, it just got bought by H&R Block, so I don't know how long it's going to be free. But for now, if you want just an easy way to keep track of your income and expenses, you can do that. You know, um, And that, what that's important because then what you do is you connect your bank, you pull your bank feed, your, all the transactions that come in, and you categorize them by where you think they're going to go. You know, and, and a lot of these, some of these applications as well, uh, you know, so, so they provide you these reports. So you can actually pull, okay, how much income, how many expenses you have, and you're good to go, you know? And then, I mean, I, yeah. I can talk about this all day, you know, because then if you sure, go one step sure, further, yeah. you go one step further, and now there's applications that do that and track your mileage as well, mm. you know? So that's very important because you need to have a running log. Again, back to documentation, you need to have a running log. Of of you need to proof those the, the, those trips. You can say, oh, I I drove, you know, twenty thousand miles. Okay, well, yeah. how are you going to prove them? You know, and there is mm-hmm. actually applications that you can get on your phone that continuously in the background run and, and record every single trip you have, and then you just go in there and say, okay, this was personal, this was business, this was personal, this was business, and that keeps you a good running log of of you know all your your different trips. That way, you have a, an amount that you can put on your tax return, and it's backed up by documentation and not just the same as last year. Because that's, that's what I always hear. I just use the same as last year. Okay, yeah. IRS comes in. There's no way to prove that, you know? So so those apps that run in the background, like MileIQ, those are enough, hmm. right? For, for, for documentation, from, from what I've seen and from what I've read, yes. Because they, they have the actual, you can actually go in there and print out the logs to see the trips that you've made. Got now, it. You need to go in there and designate business and personal, you know, uh, as well. Sure. But, um, yeah, um, as from, from my understanding, those, those are a good way to track all that for you. That way you have a good set amount because you have proof of like, look, these are the trips I made. Here you go. Got it. Got it. So something that's very important for agents because it's, it's a good amount of what they do is that driving. So I want to really zero in on the vehicle aspect and really just pull out as much money as possible. So let's start with from the actual vehicle standpoint and how we can use tax strategies to extrapolate some money back into our pockets. So let's just say I'm an agent and I want to buy a car. Mm. Am I able to buy it through the company and is the company able to buy it and then I can depreciate it? Does it have to be new? Can it be used? What what can you uh, share with us on that? So, yeah. So if if you have an actual company like an LLC or something kind of completely separate, yes, the company can buy it. Now, at the same situation, you also got to take into account to make sure that, you know, what you use for business is business and what you use for personal is is personal because for the personal we can't. Now, if you're going to buy it with the business and let's say you have an office and you leave it at the office and you take you, you drive your you drive your personal car to the office. And then once you're driving around, you actually use a company car and leave it back at the office and then drive your car home, then you can 100% take the expense related mm. to, that, to that car. But you always need to keep it to account that, you know, most people don't do that. That's not feasible. I mean, a lot of people work from home. I work from home. You know, so you got to mm-hmm. take into that account the personal use and the business use. Now, whenever you get a car, whenever you, you, you put a vehicle into, into service, you actually get to choose between um, mileage or actual expenses. Okay. okay. And that's once you when make, I'm reporting to how I'm going yeah. to benefit from this vehicle mileage yeah. or expenses, usage? actual expenses. expenses. Okay. Yeah. And so what you need to do is take a look. Cause once you make the decision once you have to stick with that. So there is no mm. going back and forth. So let's say the first year you want to take, you know, you spend a lot of money on tires and things like that. And, and let's say it comes off where maybe it's the same as mileage. 
you got you to gotta take into consideration, are you going to have those same expenses moving forward, you know, next year? Because once you make one election, you got to stick with that one for that vehicle. Okay, so, for that so, vehicle. That yeah, so traditionally, okay. I've seen a lot of agents, what makes the most sense is the mileage because they're driving around everywhere. You know, they're driving around, you know, showing this house, showing that house, you know. And right. so the mileage has always come far and above beyond um, what it is that you could do for that. Got it. So, Got it. So when you buy the cart, is there some sort of depreciation that we can keep into consideration um, yeah. from the actual asset? Yes. So whenever you do buy the car, uh, you can uh, you can depreciate it, and but you only get a, a portion of it just based on the uh, the the percentage as business. There's a business portion of it. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So so let's say you buy a vehicle for, you know, just. Ten thousand dollars, and you use a fifty percent business. You can only depreciate five thousand of it because that's the portion that's that's for business. So got it. It doesn't matter. Does it matter if it's new or used? Uh no. Um, with the new regulations that came out with the tax cuts and jobs act, you can actually now uh, depreciate. So there there are certain bonus like bonus and section one seventy nine and kind of accelerated depreciations you can take. And now with the new tax cuts and jobs act. With uh, with the new law, you can actually 100% bonus uh, used used the vehicle. So no, as long as it's new to you, you can go ahead and, and and take the depreciation. Got it, got it. As long as it's new to me, it's uh, yeah. it's something that that can be benefited. Awesome, awesome. So it doesn't need it. Does the car need to be wrapped? Does it need it? There's nothing, there's no consideration of wrapping it for promotion or anything else like that. It's just, hey, this is my work vehicle, and and that's that, as long yeah, as I'm so, documenting it. So I do want to make the, the distinction, though, that with depreciation is included under expenses. So it's it's mileage mm. or depreciation and expenses, okay? That that I want to make that perfectly clear, because um, you can't, uh, you're going to take one or the other, because once you, once you take depreciation if you take depreciation it's going to be actual expenses that you're taking on there and so somebody like with like i said with real estate i you know agents that are out and about i honestly i've seen the most benefit they get is going to be the mileage rate mileage wins out many times okay yes yeah more often than not because of uh you know going around the city and especially you know at these metropolitan cities like uh you know i know you're at where you're at up in the fort worth dallas area and then here in Houston, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of driving around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is there something else that we can touch on, on the vehicle side that I forgot to cover or ask? And, um, on the actual vehicle side of it, um, mm -hmm. off the top of my head, no, but let me, the wheels are turning. Let me, let me make sure that I can kind of, uh, get that going. And, and if something comes up, I can bring it back up. Awesome, awesome. Where's the next place that you you see real estate agents find money from either a bookkeeping keeping side, from a um, expenses side, or from an accounting? I'm sorry, taxes side. Where where can agents you know look for that quick win? Quick win is is for me. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, there's really no quick win. Oh, um, come on, no quick win. I, I I'm looking for money as you can tell. Let me so honestly, the best thing you can do is is again get get with a professional to because get with a professional and, and take a and have them look at where you're at towards especially the end of the year. Now now there there's okay, so let me take a step back. There is different things you can do. And there's certain, uh, and I'm sure everybody's heard of it. You know, you have an LLC, you make the election as as uh, to do, to have an S corp to to be taxed as an S corp, and that saves you the 15.3 percent of of uh, self employment tax that you pay to a certain extent. So, long story short, the way that works is this: you, whenever you have an LLC, you have your business, and you pay at your 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 rate. But then whatever it is that comes in from the business, you also have to pay the extra 15.3%, which is essentially your, 
your payroll taxes that you're paying in. The IRS says, look, you're not getting a paycheck, so I'm not withholding these payments, but I still want my money. So this is the way they pay it. And so whenever you're an employee, you only pay half, your employer pays half. And that this way you can actually get um, all of it. You know what I mean? Or, uh, or, or they, they get you, you as a self-employed, they, they, they charge you for all of it. And so that's where the 15.3% comes into play. Where the S-Corp can be very powerful is going to be where you make this election, so you're no longer taxed at that 15.3%. But, but and this is very, very, very important, and I see a lot of people miss this a lot. If you're going to make that election, you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. Not a 1099, not a distribution. It has to be payroll. You have to withhold and you have to submit and file your 940s and your, your 941s and your 940 to the IRS and to the, whatever state you're at. You have to file your state returns. So I hear that all the time. Mm. People think, oh, S Corp, I can save a lot of money. Yeah, you can't. But where the benefit comes into play is, is so now by paying yourself that salary, you're, so you're in fact paying the self employment tax, but look at it this way you have $100,000 in income. Okay, net income after said and done, you have to pay 15.3% on that. Or you do an S Corp, you have $100,000, but maybe you have, you know, 50,000 in wages, you only have to pay 15,000, or you only have to pay the 15.3% on the 50,000. You see, so you, you right there, you say that that's instant money that you get to save right then and there. And so that's something that that's a very powerful tool. And that's something that I highly recommend don't do it yourself <laughs> because yeah. of that caveat of you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. I can't like, can we put a banner up or something that just says salary, <laughs> pay yourself? Because that's, sure, yeah. I, I hear that all the time is, is people, people get like, they come in and, and they, they see these, um, you know, that they, they hear it and, and they hear it. And especially mm-hmm. these, like Zoom, uh, not Zoom, but uh, Legal Zoom will offer them. You know, do you want to make an S corp election, and then this and yeah. that, and yeah, it's good and all, but you have to, you know, have the ca- you have to have the cash flow to pay yourself a salary as well, and that's where the a lot fine of- print matters. The yeah, fine print 100%, matters. So, because- it, so it's not enough to auto draft. Let's just say eight thousand a month. It's not enough to people no. may think that. Well, I am paying myself a reasonable salary, but what you're paying yourself is a distribution. Yeah, it's rather a tax than free distribution. Yeah. yeah, so you have to actually run it through payroll whether you know you hire somebody to do the payroll or you get one of these payroll companies to do it for you and you have to actually withhold the taxes, send the taxes into the IRS, file your reports, you know, file W2s and W3 at the end of the year and then same thing with the state and everything. So yeah, that it has to be that and it has to be a reasonable salary. It can't be you can't be making Three hundred thousand dollars and pay yourself five thousand a year. Got it. You know, and that's where that reasonable. That's where it gets kind of tricky because it's not just a simple X amount. You know, you've got to look at the circumstances. You got to look at. It takes a lot of research, and that's where I. That's where I, I really am going to say, you guys get with a professional to be able to do that. Got it. Got 100%. it. So as we're go- working down the income statement, it sounds like what um what percentage? I know it's a loaded question, but what percentage would you encourage agents to store away in for taxes for tax purpose? I know it varies based off of income, but we see fat commission checks, <laughs> and we think that we have. Twelve thousand dollars when when reality we don't. So, what do you encourage agents to? All right, well, let's put this away. You may not use all of it, but let's put this away for tax consideration. I always later. tell people a de- a good amount is usually thirty five percent. Thirty five percent. Just just I, I've noticed that's usually okay with some of my clients. They put that away. Now, something I suggest you do as well is uh something that the IRS actually requires it so you guys uh um we need to be making we so the IRS doesn't want us to pay at in April they want us to pay our taxes throughout the year okay so a lot of people will just come on and then they have like a 30 40,000 dollar bill at the end of the year they pay it you're getting hit with penalties estimated tax penalties now they're not a lot but you are getting hit with estimated tax penalties because you haven't paid that in 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so something that we do with, with some of our clients that maybe aren't quite, again, big enough or don't have the, the cash flow yet to be able to have us do the full service bookkeeping is what we'll do is uh, we make, we help them figure out what the payment they have to make every quarter. And then you send in that payment to the IRS. And so instead of paying that $40,000 at the end of the year, you break that up into four different payments. You're fully paid in by the end of the year. You avoid that penalty and it spreads it out for you. So Okay, uh, so let me see if I understand that correctly. 2019, well, in a year. You, you said quarterly, so four, four times a year, I need to be cutting a check or depositing to the IRS at least four times a year. And then yeah. what you're what you're saying is you're gonna you help agents or any professional or anybody that's self-employed, you help them identify, okay, this is probably a good amount to to uh, submit. So you're not cash light, but at the same time, you kinda wanna provide a reasonable expectation of what your tax bill will be to where you're not coming out of pocket by a ton of money and you're also not overpaying and affecting your cash flow. Is that about right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so the payments are, are April 15th, June 15th, September 15th, and January 15th. Okay. And so what we do is we actually have a quarterly call with, with, with a lot of our clients. And, and uh, we look at, okay, where are you at? You know, whether they do their own books or we do the books, you know, again, there's books. Which is, and this is huge because there's no way I can't tax plan if you tell me, hey, I think I made this because, okay, I mean, I can whip something together, but then what happens if you forget, you know, X amount, this commission or this commission came in or you got this coming in from this deal and things like that. So for me, uh, what I do is, like I said, we, we sit with our clients and we every quarter, uh, sometimes half a year, you know, sometimes, you know, it depends on what they're, what they're, uh, what their uh, circumstances are, but we sit down with them. We're like, okay, this is where you're at. This is what we estimate based on what you made so far. We're going to, we're going to uh, shoot it out to December, estimate it out to December. Uh, and then we think this is going to be your tax estimate. So let's go ahead and make this payment at this time, X amount come quarter. So that's, you know, before April 15th and before June 15th, we take a look at it again. Okay. And now we have a little bit more data in here so we can, total out, aggregate a little bit more where you're going to be at. So it's a little bit closer. So, okay, let, let's adjust that payment to maybe a little bit lower. September, have that conversation again. Okay, let's go ahead and this is what we need to do. And then again, now is the time December because now is where it comes really powerful because it's like, okay, now we've made these three payments. This is how much we, we're pretty sure now because we are pretty much have everything in order. This is what we think your estimate's going to be. Now, let's take a look at well, how are we going to do that? Okay, uh, uh, is there a piece of equipment you have to buy or something? Or, or you need a new laptop. So I have a, I have a couple of photographer guys who, they, you know, they'll call me, hey, I need to buy a new camera. You know, the new X camera came out for six, 7000 and I want to buy it. And I, okay, you know, if you want to buy it, is that going to help you? You know, because mm. my thing is, is don't spend money. You shouldn't run your business trying to avoid tax. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you should try to make money. I mean, that's just, that's the whole point of the business. Try to make money. And so you make your money and, and, and you worry about the taxes later or you worry about the tax as you go, you know? So they call me, Hey, I want to buy this, this piece of equipment. I'm like, yeah, because we can, we can depreciate it. You know, we can take, take or uh, 179 depreciation, which is immediate accelerated depreciation. You get the the deduction there. We plug that in and we get to see, okay, that kind of, that's going to help lower your bill X amount. So then we only need to pay this. So, you know, we help them make those smart decisions at the end of the year. Instead of then just going and buying, uh, there's somebody I was talking to that their their tax strategy is they buy a new uh, truck for their fleet every year. But mm-hmm. then it sits, it sits on the yard for about three or four months. Not being, what's the return on that? It's nothing. You know, and so instead of doing that, there's other different things you can do. Put money towards retirement. You know, um, I mean, there's 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 a lot of different options that can be done. And what what can we do to kind of essentially maximize your money? And then you make that last payment in. So then when April comes in, if there's any variances or there's something you forgot to tell us or didn't tell us. And then, you know, we see it. Then at that point, you know, you're going to owe little to none usually. Unless, like I said, unless you you show up with like, hey, I sold all my stock December 31st and now I have a $30,000 gain. It's like, well, 
going to have to pay taxes on that, but everything else that, that you told me about, we've accounted for. And so Got that it. helps to spread it out, especially with the cash flow, help that spread out and help people budget a little bit better in their business for it. Got it. Got it. So let's, let's, let's go into a topic of education for the real estate agents. There's education that they have to do. So CEs, continuing education credits. Are those, do we just categorize those as expenses or is there so, any sort of credits? Is there write-offs? Or am I just saying the same thing, but just different words? Yeah, you're saying the same thing, but, but different okay. words. So yeah, you, you would, you would, it's an expense. It's, it's, it it's is a expense. business expense. Yeah, it's a business expense. And that's going to be, uh, so you're going to have your income and then under your expenses line should be continuing education because that's part of the necessity of running the business is you need to keep up with your education. Because I know if I'm not mistaken, they require a minimum amount every year or a couple years, correct? Yeah. 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 Same yeah. thing with like uh, in my industry, uh, if you're a CPA, if you're an enrolled agent, things like that, there's a minimum amount of education you have to keep up. So that's because they want to make sure, you know, that you're keeping up to date and not just know not keeping up to date so <laughs> <laughs> cool 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 so when we get into you know i think you briefly uh mentioned it or it could have been before we started recording but when we travel we get we we're talking about meals we're talking about um the actual travel the airfare uh gas and all that fun stuff and then lodging are those the same thing? Are those expenses or is there a certain limit to the type of deductions? Again, I may be repeating myself, but mm -hmm. I feel that travel is treated differently. Is that right? So there, there's, there's some, um, so if you travel, I mean, if it's necessary, and here's the thing, because I, I see a lot of people who, who travel, but you know, you're going, you're going to Cancun for a business trip. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, unless you can prove the actual conference and the receipt of the conference and everything, like, you know, a lot of people try to push it through, um, you know, but, but it, if it's a necessary or if it's a, something for your business, like if you're going to a conference or something, then by all means, you know, that, that is a legit, that is a legit uh, expense deduction, which is the same thing. And, uh, you know, take it 100%. Um, my only thing is go back to, again, record keeping, you know, because we ha uh, there's a big conference I go to in Vegas every year, you know. Okay. And so the IRS sees if I don't have the, the proof to show that I actually paid for the conference and everything, they're going to come in and say, no, that's a, that's a vacation. You, know, you can't deduct that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so, uh, yeah, it, it just always goes back to the documentation. I mean, if you paid for it and it was for your business, then generally you know to help you run your business generally you can you can take it where where it does where where the the line gets a little bit iffy is more like with uniforms and clothing and things like that like mm. you know you can say that oh i need a suit three-piece suit to go to, to <laughs> business uh, you don't have to you know you no like you know yes you do for the image but you know, and some people will argue yes, some people will argue no. I'm on the mindset. I'm more on the conservative side, so I say no because I mean, you don't need a three piece suit to go sell a house. You can go in the shorts and short, in shorts and a t shirt, and you know, and, and go sell. Now, is it going to help you? Yeah, but it's not a necessary business expense. You Got know, it. and that's just that's just how how I feel. Like I said, there's there's different people think different ways, but. That's where it gets a little bit tricky because then people are like, oh, well, I bought this Armani suit because I need to. Yeah, I mean, that's good. And I'm glad you're investing in yourself. But yeah, no, we can't take that. You know? OK. OK, so. cool. Cool, cool, cool. What's something else uh, that you can think of that agents should be aware of? What, what are they doing wrong? What are they doing right? Where can they improve um, from a tax standpoint? Let's see. The record keeping was the biggest one I I I, I can think of, but uh, off the top of my head, something else. Um, I will say if if so if some of, if some of the agents actually have um, rental properties that they're a part of that they own and they're actually renting out and things like that, you know, there's a real estate designation that you can get, which allows you to take those passive losses. So as when you have rentals, 
When you have a mm-hmm. loss, generally you can't take them. Now there are certain situations where you can take up to 25,000 and things like that, you know, and that's, that's kind of depending on the situation, but then normally for the most part, you, you can't take those losses. But there's a there's there's a designation that the IRS gives, which is a real estate professional. Now, just because you are a real estate agent doesn't mean it's not a job title. It's a designation. And so there's certain stipulations for it. And so there's like a there are certain tests that you have to meet. But overall, the general concept of it is, you know, more than 50 percent of your personal services you perform in all businesses during the year must be performed in a real estate business that you materially participate in. So this all, right off the bat excludes part-time realtors. So, you know, if, if you have a full-time job and you're a realtor on the side and, you know, you're doing that because you also, you also have to proof up 750 hours in real estate or business. And that's a lot oh. of hours to proof up. So, um, but if you're a full-time real estate agent and you're doing that, you've got houses and you're going out and everything and you can actually proof that. Now there's, there's a few other things that, test that you have to meet but those are the kind of two big ones that that uh, they look for if you can prove that then you can get this real estate designation and real estate professional designation you can actually start to uh take some of those passive losses right then and there so if you have a loss on something you can actually take it now yeah it's it's (laughs) <laughs> it's a lot of stipulations. Like I said, there's, there's, there's seven tests that go into what the 50% of material participation is. I'm not going to touch into that too much because it's, it's, it, 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 is, it is hard to get to. Let me put it that way. It is hard to get to. And this is something, if you're going to try to do that, talk with a professional. Talk with a professional that knows the real estate industry because this is something very specific. And, and if you get it wrong, you know, the IRS is going to come back and hit you with fees and penalties and, you know, on top of this and that, you know. Uh, but get with somebody and the most important thing is 750 hours and to prove those 750 hours, you have to track your time. You have to track your time. So then again, here we go to some of these, how can we do that? Yeah. You can write a piece of paper. You can, you know, keep a time log like that, but easiest thing there's, there's apps out there that'll track your time for you. Pretty, pretty cheap. You know, there's harvest time camp and T sheets are the three that come to my mind. When I think of time tracking, they integrate really well with some of these big software companies, the accounting software companies, you know. So track your time and take a look at it because it's also those 750 hours does not include researching new listings. So if you're if you're spending time and you think that you're researching, you know, spend all the time researching stuff, it doesn't count. Like I said, there's a lot of stipulations to it. So it's just, just kind of a very overview view. And then, you know, this isn't intended to you know, as, as, as full advice, like, Hey, you have full go. Cause I said so. No, no, no. This is just making you aware that that's out there. There's okay. a lot of things you need to get with a professional to, to make sure that you treat it. But if you do the easiest way to, to track those hours is again, get one of those apps on your phone, track your time. That way you have full proof of what you did and you can actually put in, okay, this is what I did. This and that, because then the IRS, they're going to ask for that. They're going to ask for that and you can give it to them. Again, going awesome. back to Keeping records. <laughs> important thing. I'm Record noticing a theme. The base. I'm yeah, it's, it's, it's the base. Noticing a theme. Awesome. Jose, well, thank you so much for being on and really uh, just imparting so much wisdom on, on us. Uh, where can people uh, connect with you? <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, uh, jzavala03, if you guys want to search for me. Uh, email jzavala at ztxadvisors.com. And then I'm at ZTX Advisors on Twitter, Instagram. And then you can look me up on Facebook as ZTX Advisors. Yeah, I think that. Oh, and YouTube. Uh, I don't have my own. I, I'm not big enough yet to, to have my own page. If you guys just look for <laughs> ZTX Advisors, you'll be able to find me. Awesome. So, yeah, awesome. I'm all over the place, man. Heck yeah. Jose, thanks so much for being on.